Hello guys today we will discuss Eliza and its quality assurance if you like our videos do subscribe Dr Labmed YouTube channel so let's get started quality assurance in Eliza is divided into pre analytical analytical and post analytical part Now coming to pre analytical part lipemic or hemolyzed serum either it can be light hemolysis or dark hemolysis it is always and always rejected even if we find the received sample is insufficient or any turbidity is noticed or any leakage is noticed it is always being rejected normally the centrifuge speed for serum should be 3000 to 3600 for 10 minutes and the serum should be stored at 2 to 8 degrees celsius so the preferred sample for eliza is serum sample and it should be stored at 2 to 8 degrees celsius for 3 days for longer period they should be removed from the clot and frozen to a minimum temperature of minus 20 degree with this a daily temperature quality check should be maintained with the calibrated thermometer or digital temperature meter storing the serum at minus 80 degree celsius it preserves and maintain the quality of the specimen if repeated thawing is predicted it should be stored at multiple elecards before using elecards of serum it should be thawed at room temperature and before using mixing is very important it can be done by gentle vortexing or inverting the tube at least 5 times if the thawed sample is not mixed properly proteins get settled down at the bottom of the tube so mixing of the sample is very important and it should be done prior to taking the sample frothing or over mixing of the sample will cause denaturation of the serum protein and may give abrupt results so the elicard tubes can be inverted at least 5 times or it can be mixed by gentle vortexing so now how can we check kits when we receive it in a department or stock the expiry date batch number or any leakage all are checked storage temperature or transportation temperature it should be between 2 to 8 degree celsius kit verification is done by positive and negative controls if controls are unavailable then non positive or non negative samples can be used so here is a picture of dengue eliza kit here we can see rd and od rd stand for receiving date when we receive the shipment and od is opening date when the laboratory staff will receive kits to the department now coming to the eliza plates we should always go with the manufacturer's instruction normally it is stored at 2 to 8 degree celsius eliza plates are usually made up of polystyrene polycarbonate or polyvinyl material which is a bad conductor of heat if there is any breakage or turbidity seen in reagent it is always and always rejected if reagent has different lot number and kit has a different lot number we cannot use this kit if kit is over and the reagent is unused we cannot use the reagent further now coming to the analytical part there are various step in eliza first step is the dilution of the patient sample it is incubated at room temperature at 25 degree celsius then it is washed then conjugate is added and again incubated at room temperature again washed then substrate is added substrate should be added in dark room and again incubated at room temperature and the final step is adding stop solution which is either concentrated acid or alkaline here there is no washing steps reading should be done within 30 minutes and it should be read by spectrophotometer these are the color photographs of eliza plates here we can see positive control negative control 
and then samples. Here in this diagram, we can see the correct sequence. At first, we can see negative control, then positive control, then blank. The usage of blank is optional. Some kids use blank as mandate and some doesn't. Then calibrator and then samples. So revising this, first place is negative control, second place is positive control, third is blank, fourth is calibrator and fifth onward will be samples. Now coming specifically to the dengue kits, the first will be three negative controls, then two positive controls, then a blank, then samples. The correct sequence of performing ELISA is A1 to H1, then A2 to H2. That means our direction should go from left to right. Now coming to the pipetting in ELISA, it is always done vertically in one press one go technique. Interpersonal verification should be done and pipette should be always calibrated. In ELISA, forward pipetting is preferred. Usually there are two stops in operating a pipette. Here in the picture we can see first stop and then second stop. So in forward pipetting, to draw up the sample, push the push button till the first stop and then release the push button to draw the sample into the pipette tip. To dispense the liquid, press the push button till the second stop to eject the accurate volume transfer. Forward pipetting is always preferred for ELISA and reverse pipetting is always used for the viscous fluid. While reading of the ELISA plate, base of the ELISA should always be cleaned since it leads to the interference and difference in the OD values. Each run should be validated by using positive control and negative control. The worksheet of ELISA should always contain date and time of the run performed, done by whom like laboratory technician and verified by any senior technician or a registered doctor. The test of ELISA is always approved by the authorized signatory or doctor. Daily worksheet of ELISA should include three forms. First is the calculation which is done for calculating the index value. Second, worksheet of sequence of controls and samples. And third is the absorbance OD of run plate. Each ELISA kit has a different formula to calculate the index value. So I am not discussing in a much detail. Now coming to the interpretation of result, most of the kit has a similar value for Dengue ELISA. If the index value is less than 0.8, it's a negative. If it varies between 0.8 to 1.1, it is equivocal and it should be retested mostly after some days, after 3 days. If the index value is more than 1.1, it is positive and it is indicative of presence of NS1 antigen or the respective parameter which is given in the kit. Now coming to the post-analytical part, labeling the negative sample as positive, it is a huge and gross mistake. So it should not be done because it affects the treatment and the clinical decision of the patient. So the counter checking of the calculation and report is very necessary and incident report should be generated. The vacutainers containing blood cells should always be disinfected in hypochlorite and then discarded in the red bins and then handed over to biomedical service agencies. So this was the detailed presentation of quality assurance in Thank ELISA. Thank you guys. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel. Take care.